uh, it really, to be honest, in terms of the Latino side of things, uh, we didn't put that, we didn't think about it. We really were like, yeah, this is what we would have done. This is what, what things do we correct? Oh, Sábado Gigante, ah, of course. Ah, Merida del Barrio, yes, uh, Chapulín, of course. It, it just came naturally. We never were like, okay, so how are we gonna make this scene Latino? I heard that you have all the cast members on your shirt yes. today. Can you talk a little bit about that? So, our friends from Millennial Loteria uh, designed some cards for their game, oh, wow. inspired on our amazing and beautiful cast. And given the fact that our cast are being heroes right now, uh, fighting for better job uh, pays and conditions, yeah. I wanted to wear them. So I know they're sad that they cannot be here, mm -hmm. but they understand that what they're doing is important for the future generations and they have my full support. So the, the least I could do was bring them with me. Yeah, I so I know they're here in spirit. What has that been like being on this press tour, you know, having to promote it on, on your own? What, is, what have been some of the challenges, some of the excitement? Because I know you've been very accessible <laughs> to fans, even, even at the screen. Yeah, I mean, I love it, you know, and uh, it's, it's part of what you have to do. But at the same time, what I love what I do. I love talking about what I love. And I also enjoy a lot having conversations with people. Mm -hmm. I think... Yeah, as exhausting as it might be, because it's a lot for one person to do. Um, with the cast, you can like distribute it, and yeah. um, I connecting with fans and having experiences with people from other cultures or other countries definitely fuels the energy. Because mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot. You know, I learn a lot when I talk to people. I I get, I get reassurance, you know, I get empowered. Um, so any depletion of energy caused to poor nights of sleep and constant travel are immediately replenished when interacting with beautiful people. Oh, I love that. We were able to kind of take that from the fans of and, and have that exchange of energy. energy. Uh, yeah, yeah, like if words have power and power is energy, exchanges with beautiful people and and, and, and interesting conversations mm -hmm. is another way of soaking in the sun, you know? Yeah, and you know, I heard also online that you had originally wanted to pitch a Bane origin <laughs> yeah. story, and then they were saying, how about, you know, we, yeah. have, this, we have this movie, Blue Beetle, we think <laughs> yeah. you'd be great for it. What was it like for you mentally, you know, having to pivot from wanting to tell a supervillain origin story <laughs> to this, you know, coming of age superhero one? Well, I mean, uh, of course, I, I had no idea they were working on something like Blue Beetle. Um, and when, when they tell you you're meeting with DC, you, you want to go, you know. <laughs> when, they're, you're, they're calling up, when they're calling you up to bat, you want to hit a home run. And so I was like super prepared. I, uh, I think this is a great idea, right? Uh, you know, coming out of the, 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 f the success of a film like yeah. The Joker and, and understanding like all these other characters that might have so many things to explore. Um, I, I came, I wanted to pitch that Bane idea. But you know, uh, Matt Reeves has mm -hmm. that Batman universe and mm -hmm. back then, no, no, I, I didn't know, and I don't know if anybody knew that there were gonna be like three regime changes. Mm -hmm. So um, they came in and it's like, yeah, that's a great idea, but <laughs> <laughs> we got this project here and, and it's uh, Blue Beetle. And I knew a little bit about Blue Beetle. I knew that Jaime Reyes was in it. And, and my first reaction was like, I didn't want to brownwash something, mm -hmm. you know, that already existed. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's okay if there's like familiarities with certain things, but I didn't want to be the person that, that, I, that, that my Latinidad had to uh, conform mm -hmm. to somebody else's expectations of Latinidad. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to be able to be free and I wanted the actors that I hired that are Latino to be authentically themselves. Yeah. Uh, so when I said that, they were like, oh no, no, don't worry. Like our writer is Gareth Duna Alcocen. Mm -hmm. He's a Mexican from Querétaro. And just read the script, let me know what you think. Yeah. And when I read the script, I could see that the person who wrote it not only is Latino, but he wrote characters that he knows. Mm -hmm. And they were so relatable because we realized that even though we're both from different countries, 
we're so similar. Yeah. Our families are so similar. Mm -hmm. The music, the TV shows, we grew up exactly the same, mm -hmm. just in different countries. And we were like, oh my gosh, this is special. Because not only Mexicans are gonna connect, but I think all of Latinos are gonna connect. Mm -hmm. And consequentially, other peoples that are not Latino are also gonna connect yeah. if they're open and curious. And what was, yeah, can you talk a little bit more about what those conversations were like between you and the writer? Because I love that two of the biggest things that stood out to me was there's no damsels in distress. The yeah. women are in this movie fighting as well. And then also, like you were saying, just the way that you found, you found a way to blend all of these Latino cultures within this story <laughs> while still centering a Mexican family, which I thought was, was brilliant. So I wanted to know, you know, what conversations went about in terms of being like, hey, like I see your script, here's how I think we can visually, you know, bring this to life. Uh, it really, to be honest, in terms of the Latino side of things, uh, we didn't put that, we didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. We really were like, yeah, this is what we would have done. This is what, what things do we correct? Oh, Sábado Gigante, ah, of course, ah, Merida del Barrio, yes, mm -hmm. uh, Chapulín, of course. It, it just came naturally. We never were like, okay, so how are we gonna make this scene Latino? No, not at all. Um, we cannot hide who we are, and if if we have the opportunity to to tell our collective experiences, uh, because we are Latino, they're gonna come out Latino. Yeah. So, and there's so much more things that that we have in common than than not. That being able to embrace them and also live in the in the specificities of certain things mm -hmm. that might only happen in Mexico, but Maybe it happens in Puerto Rico, but differently, oh, okay. right? So being able to keep the family authentically Mexican, but also understanding that certain things, although they use different language or they eat a different food, they still shoot with the mouth and they still mean the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So being able to hone into that, I think brought in the universality of it. Um, and you had another question. Yeah, I like the way that you portrayed the woman in the, the woman. film. Where there were, you 100%. Know, Nana was out there with a gun, too. Yeah. <laughs> we, we didn't, you know, we know the tropes, right? Mm -hmm. We know the hero's journey, and we all know the superhero genre, how it works. And we wanted to, we didn't want to miss the opportunity of, you know, just tell the story through a different lens, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for us, we don't, it's hard to keep a secret from your mother or family because they're always in your face, always up your nose. And, <clears throat> and we wanted to like, okay, if that's gonna happen, then let's just keep them in from the beginning. Mm -hmm. They were doing the transformation, they're still gonna be their family and they're gonna bully him. And he, because he is a reluctant hero, not a reluctant for a moment, it's like the whole film, he just wants this out. Yeah. Uh, and then he ends up understanding that that's his destiny and that could not have happened without his family. Yeah. And we wanted to create this love letter to the people that came before us, mm -hmm. to our ancestors, especially to the women in our lives. Our women are not, definitely, none of my family is a dancer in distress. Mm -hmm. They're tougher than I can ever be. And we wanted to honor that. Mm -hmm. They paved the way, they have their own sacrifices that they have made in order for us to be here and they are heroes in their own right. Yeah. So we wanted to give them heroic arcs because it is important to see our, the women in our lives differently mm -hmm. than society has pushed them to be. Also another thing that stood out to me when watching this was the soundtrack. Nice. From yeah. Calle 13 to Vicente Fernandez, <laughs> Selena, like y'all put it, Cypress Hill, like <laughs> you put in every like legend within the Latino community and music. Why was, uh, how did that, those conversations happen with your music supervisor and, mm -hmm. and why was it important for you to include, you know, mostly Latinos in, in that So, because when, when, you know, the movies that you have seen, every time they go to a Latin country, if they go to Mexico, it's always the same music. Yeah. If they go to the Caribbean, it's always the same music. And the truth is that, yeah, we listen to that, but we also listen to other stuff. Mm -hmm. Not only do we consume stuff from the US, but we also have great rock bands in our countries. Uh, just because other people have not heard it doesn't mean that they're not great. Mm -hmm. And doesn't mean that that formed us. So the same way that I've been introduced to other music uh, from the US without any complaints, I wanted to introduce the, the world to the music that I grew up with, mm -hmm. hoping they don't complain about it either. Uh, 
So that's why when we started, when I started with the project, I made a playlist. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so what are the songs that each of my family members would have on their phones? Mm -hmm. So I went in and I did this huge playlist and then we started like trimming down. Um, Gareth had written some songs already into uh, the script from his uh, childhood. And then when I came in, I'm like, okay, that's good, but you've heard this song before. They're like, yeah, of course. I'm like, well, let's use that, mm -hmm. right? Because your specificity, I want it. Mm -hmm. But that maybe that's not what anybody, uh, people outside, you know, Mexico have heard. Yeah. But you know Sola Stereo, right? Yeah, of course. Why don't we <laughs> use it? Yeah. You know Calle 13? Yeah, of course. Why don't we use it? Los Psychos, and so on and so forth. So we were like, okay, let's, this is something that I can listen to. Like, it speaks to my experience growing up as a Latino kid, too. Mm -hmm. And I love that you also mixed in um, Ted, Ted Cord's story yeah. into this. You know, we see his lair. We see them using some of his <laughs> gadgets. Um, what were some of the elements of his from, from the past that you were like, we have to include this, we have to bring this in, because I, I want to also honor, you know, that, yeah, the legacy. that legacy. So, yeah, we definitely, uh, Gareth is the writer. He's so... Um, knowledgeable mm -hmm. on everything Ted Cord and everything Jaime Reyes and Dan Garrett. Like, he's a true fan of all of this. And he, he wanted Ted Cord to be as a strong character in the film without him being in the film. Mm -hmm. uh, and we wanted to set him up, of course, uh, for something in the future, if possible. But one of the things that we really wanted to play with, especially... Uh, that was on the script, but have fun with it was the bug ship. Uh, we, wanted to, we wanted to fly the bug ship, right? Not just see it, but we also wanted to give the bug ship a personality. Mm -hmm. Like, um, when you look at the bug ship's face, it almost feels like, like a puppy smiling. Yeah, it does. But then, it, it, yeah, because we, we decided, I have a puppy, and we kind of like, she was like, ah, super cute. Mm -hmm. So we were like, oh, what if the bug ship looks cute? But then when you go beast mode, it goes crazy. But it's attacking people with a smile. Because <laughs> that's my puppy running at me, right? I was like, how can we have fun with that? And I was like, okay, that's awesome. But the other part that, that the, the writer really wanted to use is, because he finds it so absurd, is the trapeze mm. that comes from the bug ship. Uh, and that for me was super special, just being able, for him also being able to see something he grew up loving manifested in the screen and having fun with it, uh, it made it very special. Um, and there's other stuff that we made up, mm -hmm. right, from Ted Cord. Uh, but I think the bug ship is the most iconic one. And, and that scene with Monty Crew is just exciting. Oh, it's, exciting. it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. And, you know, you yourself as a director have had to deal with, you know, a lot of opposition, had resilience. You had Charm City Kings that, you know, had some hurdles with COVID. Now you have this film, Hurdles with the Ongoing Strike. For you yourself, how, have, how has gone through this opposition that is, you know, both of these situations out of your control, how has that helped you grow um, as an artist? And essentially, how did you take, you know, some of those, those oppositions and apply them when, when creating this? Um, well, I guess the natural reaction, of course, is resistance, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's a resistance that comes with it. And... And then you kind of learn to accept it in a way. Uh, and then, okay, well, if this is what it is, how can I flip the script or how, how can this benefit in a way? Yeah. Uh, what can we do? Uh, and it's very personal. Like, I guess our history as Puerto Ricans has been a history of resilience and resistance. Um, and I think it, it came manifested big time after the hurricane when we were left to die by the local government and the U.S. government. And our resilience was what made us survive. Mm -hmm. We figured out that if nobody's going to come save us, like we were told they were, we're going to have to save ourselves. Mm -hmm. And with the power of community and with our families and protect each other. And that's how we were able to overcome so I think that was to the point that in 2019, mm -hmm. uh, we came together as a people and we got rid of a corrupt governor. Mm -hmm. 
something unheard of in our culture. So that for me was like a real wake up call as to what we're capable of doing um, when, when, when we find the strength within ourselves and within the people around us. And with Charm City Kings, it was no different. Of course, there were plans of, of going worldwide, mm -hmm. I mean nationwide, under Sony Picture Classic. The pandemic hit, and then we ended up on streaming. Um, out of our control, yeah. not what we planned, but at the end of the day, something great came after it. And I guess uh, as a relentless optimist that I think I like to be, mm -hmm. uh, even with everything that, uh, all the curveballs that are thrown at us, um, now with this, uh, with the strike, it's very hard for me to get upset about it. One, the, like I said, like the initial reaction is like, well, of course, it always happens. That's kind of like the first reaction. Mm -hmm. But then you realize if it was for something banal, for something stupid, then I will get mad. But the truth is that our writers and actors are fighting for something 100% legit. Mm -hmm. And they are in the right side of history. And sure, the timing was off. Why didn't it happen a month later so that we can have our moment? But at the same time, I'm like, if it happened today, it's because it had to happen today. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that our actors are treated fairly, our writers are treated fairly, that they're being compensated accordingly to their work. And if that happens, then that guarantees us a more years of amazing stories to be told. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that helps me navigate these times because of course they wanna be here. That's why I brought them in my shirt, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm here representing them. And, and they did this with so much love and compassion and, 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 and power and empowerment. That I just hope like, you know, the audiences are able to see that and are able to support them. Not just because this movie, because of what they can bring and what we can bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So hopefully people go watch the movie because it is a good movie and our cast killed it and they're gonna fall in love with them. And that will only probably ensure to see more of them in the future. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we have to support them.